Hello everyone and I hope you're all doing very well. So you guys have asked me to do a video about evading uh, radar guided SAMs or just evading SAMs and we're just going to be looking at radar SAMs to begin with because they're just the easy, easiest ones to evade. Now note at this point that if we look in the air to ground combat playlist that this is in, I've already done two videos on this. The first one I did is showing evading radar guided SAMs by shooting them down. You can actually shoot them down with Fox 2. So, so that's one video I've already done. And then I've done another video about evading radar guided SAMs by going really low, so low, about 15 feet off the ground that you actually um, are mixed in with the clutter and, we, um, and it causes so much noise to be transferred back to the receiver of the SAMs that it can't actually filter you out, it can't shoot at you, it essentially makes you invincible from radar guided SAMs if you go very 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 low. Now both of those methods uh, we've considered to be unrealistic and so you guys said that that's cool and that's great and you can go and do that in DCS but you also wanted uh, what we call a realistic version of things that people would actually do. So first of all we just need to quickly talk about why those other ones are not realistic. So the first one, first one where we could shoot SAMs down from the skies, the missiles down from the sky with our FOX 2s. Now a lot of you guys said in the comments that's not realistic, DCS is a stupid game, that's not realistic, D that's not realistic, DCS must be unrealistic. You, I know most of those people that said that would have been just kids but you gotta be very very careful when you when you say things like that. Um, and when I come back to those people, I say, OK, um, give me your evidence as to why that's not realistic, why you can't shoot down missiles with a FOX-2, and I'll go with it. I'll believe it. Absolutely fine. And surprise, surprise, they just shut up. Uh, no one can give me any evidence. And the answer is, um, everyone I've, speak to, I've spoken to, no one knows if you can shoot down missiles with a FOX-2. We've got a real-life active fighter pilot in our ranks he's not someone who you'll probably know by name and I'm not going to tell you who he is but he's an advisor and uh, gives us some pretty dang good information and if I put that to him then he says he doesn't know of course he doesn't know because even if it was possible you know his bosses would never tell him because it's such an almighty stupid dangerous thing to do no one in the world really knows if this is possible or not apart from you know the real geeks who actually made that type of missile otherwise everyone's really just speculating because you know like I said even if this was possible no one would ever teach their pilots to do it because it's so ridiculous and such a tactically awful thing to try and do so to summarize the, the ability to shoot a missile down technique of evading SAMs uh, we don't know if it's unrealistic or not in terms of physics but what we certainly do know is that it's clearly just not a logical thing to do no one would ever teach anyone to do that it's completely dangerous and unsafe hence that's why we're calling it unrealistic the next uh, way I showed you to evade radar guided SAMs is to go low, really low, about 15 feet, scraping the ground. And none of the Cold War SAM systems that are in DCS can track you and fire at you. Now, we're pretty sure in terms of that, in terms of the physics, that is accurate. We're pretty sure if an F-15 was travelling at 15 feet off the ground, no SAM, even today the S-400, S-500 series in, in the workings, Pretty sure nothing in terms of radar guidance could track you uh, simply be because, uh, and we've spoken to a couple of guys, well, I have to be a bit careful what I say, but if someone knew what the answer to this was, we're pretty sure we've spoken to these people and um, they agree that it's just not possible. It's not possible to filter out that target if they are literally mowing the grass. So we don't think it's unrealistic in terms of physics. What we do think it's unrealistic is in terms of the same thing about shooting the SAMs down with your missiles. It's incredibly stupid and dangerous thing to do. No one would ever tell their pilots to dodge SAMs by going 15 feet off the ground. What if they hit a clothesline? What if they hit a chimney? What if they suck in some birds? What if they, you know, it's just plain logic. You don't tell your pilot to do that. Yes, tell them to go 100 feet. Tell them maybe to go 50 feet. Don't tell them to go 15 feet. Real life, you just can't survive it too dangerous too stupid thing to do you would never be taught it so that leads us to what we're doing today and my apologies for taking so long but it's important to understand why we're doing this so what we're going to do now is look at what we would say would be you know you guys know I'm not a you know a military pilot I don't really know but looking at the realistic options what 
would someone be willing to teach their pilots in terms of the amount of risk that they're willing to take and that's what we're going to be looking at today ways of evading these sams not by going super 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 low dangerously low not doing stupid things like shooting missiles at them but doing solid tried and tested and trusted conservative safe things to do to evade sams uh, now because this is a game at the end of the day and my life means nothing in this game i can just respawn if i die some of these examples i will take to the extreme and so it will become unrealistic in that sense it'll be obvious when i'm doing that i'll say when i'm doing that but other than that everything i will show we consider to be a realistic and sensible thing to do it's not as effective as the other the, the unrealistic ways but it's more like what we would actually see but i shall stop boring you and let you get on with it there are various types of radar sams and i've taken two uh, just to give us a good average we've got on the crappy side the sa6 in the kind of late 1950s uh, mid early 1960s uh, soviet sam and then we've got a more modern late 1980s pinnacle of the time sa10 s300 ps series very roughly speaking sa6 has a range of about 20 miles in ideal conditions and about 60 to 70 miles for the sa10 now how to evade radar sams uh, it, it was this is a difficult video to make and i started putting it together and i started putting all my charts my calculations together my speeds my g pools and stuff like that and it got so big because there are so many variables here what do you actually want to do are you just trying to avoid the sam are you to avoid the sam but keep tally on the sam are you avoid the sam to keep tally on the sam and recommit uh, are you on a siege mission are you on a defense mission are you on a cast mission uh, all these different things are variables and adjust is actually what you're going to do so we're going to wind it back and just simplify it, just how to ballistically beat the SAM missile and the good news is that that is actually very simple it's just very basic geometry and a bit of radar knowledge and that's actually all you need to beat the missiles so to beat the SA-6 we're going to do uh, one example which is a medium altitude example it's all we really need beating at high altitude is very easy beating at low altitude it can't even shoot you at low altitude so that's irrelevant so medium altitude for that s300 is more going to be more difficult it's going to be more tactical to beat that we'll do a high altitude at 20,000 feet we'll do a low altitude on the deck where it can shoot at me and we'll do a medium altitude here and we'll do an aggressive attack there and uh, we'll pull it in we'll tie that in with a um, with an attack on the radar as well uh, we'll use the f5 because it's just average isn't it it's got a gun it's fairly maneuverable um a good very good uh, aircraft for learning to do this kind of thing because it hasn't got bundles of en uh, kinetic energy ability like the f15 or something so it's a good plane to learn in okay so sa6 medium altitude off we go so the first thing is knowing where the sam is you may or may you may not know this it may turn its radar on at the last minute and blast you or you may be able to get uh, information from your RWR. RWR is preferable because it gives you a uh, that immediate knowledge. And knowledge is key to defeating these things. The more knowledge you've got on that missile launch, either electronically or visually, the uh, better you can beat the missile. The more variables you've got to put into your calculation, which is your brain, and uh, and beat the missile. So the first thing we're going to do in this aircraft is we're going to... Uh, all our WRs are different, but the F5E, we're going to turn our search, turn on our search. And you can see we've got a big bird over there. That's there. That's our one. Our 06 is there. So we're going to keep going. It's disappeared in the F5. That means it's either disappeared, which is unlikely, or it's got a lock on us. So let's uh, go to track search. And you can see we've got this guy's now got a track or a lock on us. Uh, next thing to note, speed. How do you defeat SAMs in general? Uh, basic physics. You have to have speed and altitude. Without those two things, you can't beat a missile. You can't do it with fancy flicks. There might be guys on the internet that can show you doing a fancy Cobra with chaff or something you might be able to beat it but it, again it's like shooting the missiles down it's not tactical it's just showing off and it's not a proper way to beat a missile so when i say speed and altitude the higher the speed the better however that said to a limit um you don't want to go too high because if you get to high, too high then maneuverability becomes a problem you can start blacking out and you can get to the kind of 9g limit very easily so i usually say 400 to 500 is ideal and you're probably going to be doing this in a fighter plane a little, little bit less less for a harrier maybe now we're never going to beat the aircraft uh, the uh, SAM missile kinetically just in terms of speed it's always going to be faster than this it's going to be start of 2000 knots or something so we also need altitude and it's not high altitude we need it's low altitude so 
we're not, we don't get to control our starting altitude because we're pretending that the SAM has jumped us. It's come up from nowhere. We haven't been able to get low. Uh, so it's going to have the advantage of being able to shoot us when we're high or when we're medium altitude in this case. So we're going to give the SAM that benefit. Then what we have to do is to get down to the deck as quickly as possible. The lower we are, and this applies to all SAMs including the S300, the lower we are, the faster we are, the harder it is for A, that radar to find us, B, that missile to kinetically track us and lead us. And when beating missiles kinetically, in terms of geometry, the lead is what's important. And being able to nullify that missile's lead. So what we'll do now is we'll just pretend that um, uh, we see this missile as no threat. We're just going to fly pretty much straight into it. The first thing that happens when that missile fires is you want to get an eyesight on that. You want to look at that missile to confirm where it's going. And your best tool, even above the RWR, is to zoom in and see how the, what that missile is doing. Is it going straight up? Is it going left? Is it going right, forwards, backwards? And therefore, that's how we're going to adjust our flight to beat that thing in terms of kinetics. So we're going to fly forward now. We're going to wait till it fires at us. Our RW, all of our RWRs will tell us when it's fired at us. We'll then scramble to find it and look at it and then make the necessary corrections. So off we go. A little bit slow. We want to get a bit more kinetic energy in the bird. Keep ourselves nice and neutrally trimmed. As it happens, it's going to be directly on our nose, so we should be able to see it pretty easily. And that is a missile launch, so look with our eyes, and it's right on the nose, really easy to find there. Give it a couple of seconds just to see what it's doing. I'd like to see its trajectory, because then we can plan accordingly. You can see this one's going up and towards us by about 45 degrees, that feels. So it's not actually going straight up, it's coming towards us at the same time. So what we want to do now is all the things we've talked about. Let's just um, go outside here. So this missile is a non-lofting type missile, at least in this scenario. It's going to go pretty much kind of 45 degrees up until it impacts with my current course. So we're going to defeat that. What we're going to do is we're going to turn and we're going to head pretty much straight down. It doesn't have to be perfectly 90 degrees. What I'd say is the more threat we're in, the steeper we want to go to be able to beat this missile. And we're doing that because we want to beat its intercept trajectory or beat its lead. So this thing is always going to be leading us. It's aiming in front of us because it it's heading at a speed and I'm heading at a speed and that just has to happen. So imagine now I'm heading 500 knots down towards the earth like this. Well, at that point, the, the theoretical impact point of where that missile is going to intercept me is actually going to be below the sea. So what we're going to do then is actually run that missile into the ground before it hits us. Either that or it will realize it cannot hit us anymore and it will self-detonate. So when we're in that downward dive, we need to think about what we're going to do after that and there are two options one is we're going to head back so that will make this move a full split s and uh, that would be preferable as long as there's no tactical reason why we would want to not to do that if there was a tactical reason why we would not want to do that for instance maybe we were aggressing on these sounds maybe we were wild weasels uh, and doing kind of seed work trying to take out this type of SAMs or then maybe there was bad guys that were chasing us you know so if we don't want to do that then we can notch the missile if we're going to notch the missile then we're going to head straight down and when turning down we were going to be turned either left or right um, it does matter if it's going to be left or right it's based on a tactical scenario so if there's hostiles or SAMs or whatever over there then turn right and vice versa. So we're going to be heading down at that point. Um, we'll do the notch because it's a little bit harder. We're going to have our orientation in the dive turn so that we're going to, for instance, come out this way here. And we want to pull out pretty much at the last second so that we are go running this way on the deck. And that will be a situation where we are notching the missile. So we've actually beaten the missile forcing it into the ground because of its uh, intercept trajectory that we talked about. And then by the time we've finished and pulled out, we are then notching the missile at low level, which will stop, thwart any subsequent launches from this period SA-6. And this period SA-6 will not be able to shoot and track us when we're kind of below about 100 feet. It's just a limitation of the system. Regards speed, we don't want to get too fast again. If we jazz ourselves up to 700 knots doing this, we're probably going to just break our own neck in the G-force, pass out, whatever. It'll usually just help the missile. Keep it nice and slow in controlled i'm probably going to throttle down if anything let gravity do the work and we're going to adjust the severity of the move based on the threat and that's something else we need to talk about the range of the threat and i've got a lovely picture here i've spotted the missile well in time because you know it was a fake mission and i can tell you that is six to seven miles that launch away so for us that is a lethal threat we do need to do some very fairly harsh maneuvers a lot of the time when you get fired at a missile you may have a warning on the rwr but you haven't got a clue about the range could be firing at 40 50 60 miles away if you don't know the range, if you can't ascertain the range, either visually, 
or by other methods, then assume the worst case and do the most aggressive uh, type of move to get out of it. Uh, that's the best thing to assume. There are exceptions. The F-18 Hornet will have an SA page and data link that will tell you where the radar guided missile has been fired from. It'll say it's been fired from 22 miles or you can measure it on the SA screen, essentially, and then um, you can kind of cheat a bit if you like. But the other way is by using, um, uh, well, if not GCI, then uh, visually is going to be the preferred method. And as well as that, we want to keep an eye on this uh, missile's path as well. These are all smoked missiles, so it's great to keep an eye on them to check their trajectory to see if we need to adjust ours to make our move more steep. This will come into play more on a harder missile like the S-300 later on. So let's get on with it. We're going to unpause. We do a nice controlled dive down, half roll dive to the left and, uh, and get on with it. So power off into the roll and let's try that there pause there so we're pretty steep but you can see we're about 70 degrees or something like that and you can see already what we've done to that missile hugely upset it uh, you can see it's come up originally uh, where the where the thick smoke is and then it's parabolaed and come down and it's almost certainly going to hit somewhere in these fields somewhere because the, the intercept trajectory theoretical trajectory is going to be inside the sea somewhere. You can see it's managed to fire a second missile at me and will almost certainly beat that as well. It'll just ram itself into the ground here. So we would have beaten this kinetically and then put ourselves in a position to notch that radar at low level where it can't fire again. So I'm going to keep checking right to check the check the missile. And what we're doing is we're checking right just to check the course of that missile and if it's not, you see that one's literally just hit the ground I think. Yeah, you can see that's hit the ground. So now I'm looking at that one. And I'm just getting a feel for if that thing looks like it's going to hit the ground before it hits me or not. And if it is, then I put the nose down further. If it's not, I can be relaxed. I can see that it's going to be quite a relaxed pull out here. Just, you can just see the shape of that. And um, so we can just pretty easily now do that. Okay. And that's both rammed into the ground. Now, um, knowing your missiles is essential. I know an SA-6 is an early 1960s piece. It can't track me down here. Below 100 feet, there's nothing it can do to track me. I'm completely invincible. And just for fun, what we'll do is we'll go and kill it. It's not really part of the video. It's not a seed video, really. But So I've turned my um, search type radar on. i on my guns if I can. It's always difficult to do. Uh, do. Uh, where is the gun arm? There, I just can't click it try with my right hand. Now I give up, I can't get the gun arm, so we're just going to go and pretend we've got the guns. Let's go and find him, full power, let's not mess around. Perfectly safe down here, there's nothing he can do to shoot us. In fact, one more try, let's try and get that gun armed. Uh, it's just a very annoying problem with the uh, Tiger, there's not much we can do about it. I can unarm it, but I can't arm it. No, giving up. Let's just try and find this thing. Little Sam, where are you? There it is. Oh, they're working. Okay, that was a bit weird, but proof of concept. Anyway, that was just playing around, but it showed you the move I wanted to show you. And I explained the reasons why I want to do that move. Next is to go put it into more practice with a more formidable foe. It's going to be our S300. In fact, before we do that, there's some, uh, a couple of things I missed. So, okay, well, what if you're going at low altitude and this thing fires at you? Uh, we could be at 500 feet low altitude and this thing could fire at me could easily trap me at 500 feet now the bad thing about that is we don't have the possibility of doing that vertical down move because we're already too low so we can't do that kinetic beating of the missile by driving it into the ground so if we are low and we don't have altitude to play with the only move we do is full power because we'll need that power down here um, because we can't go down instead we're going to go either left or right the same the decision made by the same tactical reasons as last time and we're going to pull a fast high g turn either left or right and then just turn away from the missile i wouldn't personally try and notch it down from low because chances are you're not going to have seen that missile launch if you're down low so it's just going to be basically turn around when you're happy you've beaten the missile recommit so summary of that medium altitude do what i've shown today low altitude power on high g turn left or right and turn away throughout all of this um the theory is we should be doing chaff as well i just um I, I don't really see the need of it in this video so i won't be chaffing but as you all know beating radar missiles you'll be doing regular chaffs either a program 
or uh, just single shafts at regular intervals to help confuse the radars. Okay, so I won't waste any more of your time at NSA-6 because you know it's not a massive threat. Now let's go and play with the S-300, which is a serious threat. Uh, we'll go low first for the S-300. So we're cruising along. We're going to be above the sea just to show we've got absolutely no cover at all. And we're going to do exactly what we said, uh, which is going to be the high G pull left or right. Um, and because it's a the key thing is also knowing your missiles as well so we can know that the SA-6 has a small burn time or well, a relatively small burn time it, it, so it's not actually going to chase you for a very long an S-300 has a very long burn time I don't know the amount of seconds I don't really need to know but I know it's a long burn time it will chase me for a long time so we're going to add a little bit extra when it comes to dodging okay so let's go okay in we go okay we're low now we're going we know the A-10 uh, sorry the SA-10 is on the nose because um, we made the mission, so we got everything in our favour. We're going to go to search. We can see we've got a big bird search there. That sounds like a lock. We've got a lock track from an SA-10. Just pushing our speed up. Okay, we're above 400 now. We're okay. Uh, we're just going to play along now and wait for the thing to launch. When it launches, we haven't got the ability to dive down. That's going to be a launch. There it is. It's launched. So, what we're going to do... Power on, burners on, IG turn. In fact, before we do that, we should always make a note of the vector that the hostile was at. It was going to be about 030, so we're going to head away at uh, 210. So let's get that done. So let's keep that a high G turn, keep it 500 knots or thereabouts. Keeping everything nice and smooth and good. That's 210, roll and pause just to see whether we can't do this in real life but i got a good feeling it's chasing us but it hasn't caught us up yet uh so where is it so there it is <clears throat> so it's there it's traveling at 2000 knots so it's really got it's full energy and we're only 500 knots so we can't get any faster than this uh, it's going to outrun us and chase us down because it's a high burning missile high burn missile like i said so in this case with a high burn missile grumble like this we've got to bleed its energy down if we want to stay alive so we're going to add on to it our s's so our s's are going to be left and then right high g high speed turns that keep us on average facing 210 but those high g turns are going to force that missile to lead on each left and on each right and force it to turn and missiles hate turning especially once the boat is finished burning um so what we're doing is increasing the overall distance that missile has to travel and eventually its burn is going to run out um and also it's forcing it to turn left and right and we're going to see a reduction in its speed so we're bleeding its kinetic energy whilst retaining Although our lower, although our, our kinetic energy is much lower um, in terms of our speed, but we can retain that because we've got a constant burn from our afterburner. So as long as we don't over G the plane, over alpha the plane, we can maintain about 500 knots. We can still beat this thing. So uh, we should be chaffing as well. I'm just going to beat it purely kinetically in this case. In terms of high and low, we're not going to be able to beat this S300 radar. So it's purely uh, beating it kinetically in this case. So let's get on with it. Got to do it fast because that missile's not going to wait around. have a snapshot in a minute see how the missile's getting on so we've done that uh, so it's getting close but the speed so we've just burnt 1000 knots off that thing um and it's gonna be a close call because it's still 1.5 miles behind but it's probably gonna be out of burn now it is out of burn so any or oh, that you see me right there any turn more turn that i put in is going to burn this thing and it's no longer got thrust um so um i'm still confident we can beat it so let's keep going Oops. You can still we'll see we're still heading two one zero here. Look, Let's see where the missile is now. Oh, ha, just uh, just ditched in front of me. I think uh, this one's still nine hundred knots. There, uh, look, it just gave up. Uh, it's a self-terminating missile. So if it decides it can no longer beat me kinetically, it just dies. Uh, this one, I've got to continue beating. So. It's a very low drag, that missile. It won't slow down on its own very well. We need to, to force it left and right. I think that's probably done it. Uh, you can see it's got to 0.6 miles, but it's uh, it can't beat us. It's just too slow now. It's 500 knots. And why don't we do a victory roll from here? Woo! Okay, 
So that shows how we can defeat the missile, uh, you know, the hardest missile we've got in DCS. DCS goes up to the end of the Cold War, obviously, and this was the most vicious variant of the most vicious missile during the Cold War. It got very close to us, but because basic knowledge of how to beat that missile is in there, it's never going to be able to beat us. The only way it could have beat us is if it had fired a, instead of about seven miles or whatever that was, if it fired us about three miles, then we couldn't have beat that, couldn't have beaten that missile. Unless we literally hid behind a, uh, uh, behind something, but there's nothing to hide, hide uh, in this case. And everything I've shown here will work with every other type of radar missile, this being the hardest. So next we're going to show the medium altitude, and it's going to be exactly the same as the medium altitude dodging of the SA-6. We're going to go into that dive, we're going to beat it in terms of its intercept trajectory, and also getting low and fast as well. So let's get in our medium altitude aircraft. Uh, sorry, I, I want to do high first. Let me do high first, because the medium, we're going to try something funky. So let's do uh, high altitude. So this is the worst case scenario you can get at high altitude. Uh, SA-10 locks onto you and fires at you. Very, uh, very dangerous position to be in. So we're going to go our speed up again. That's very important. We're going to go and search. We're going to search for the threat. Okay, we've got a big bird and a clamshell ahead of us. So that's a full suite. Mm, check they're not tracking us. And they're not. They're still looking at my old dead body, I suspect. Which works for me just fine. Right, so this is high altitude. Most of the same rules still apply, um, except it's going to be a bit of a different technique. Just going to wait for wait for him to lock at us and fire at, fire at us. I think, yeah. We're probably about 50 miles away, so I'll explain why. No track yet. Got a track. SA-10 is tracking. It's going to fire soon. Got a launch, same rules as usual, let's uh, have a good look at him. So SA-10 is uh, going up, our knowledge of this missile is good, we know it's a loft, high burn lofter, so it's not going to come straight up, it's actually going to go up into space basically and come down on top of us. We don't want that, we're going to do our usual thing. Uh, we can do uh, the full split S and head out. If we we're going to do that at 20,000, let's not waste all of our potential energy by going down to the deck in this case, because we've ascertained it is far away, because we can see that visually, we can see that's at least 20 miles. We've got plenty of time uh, to turn away. So what we could do is a split S from 20,000 feet here down to 10,000 feet. Uh, tactical split S is usually 10,000 feet, in, at least in a fighter aircraft, a mod, sorry, modern jet fighter aircraft. And we will end up going backwards, upright but backwards at 10,000 feet and we can just burn away and we would have pretty much no threat. If we did still have retaining threat, what we could do is reduce our altitude further, altitude further by going left and doing the left and the right side you saw there to burn it down, but so far away is very little threat. If um, we decided, if we couldn't get a tally on this missile, it just sprung up from nowhere, assume it's the worst case scenario. Assume it's six or seven miles. In that case, straight down to the deck, waste all of our potential energy, trading everything for maximum defense, and then we would turn cold at uh, once we were at, down on the deck, and then do our, so that'll be a 20,000 foot split S in that case. If it's like it is now, I think it's kind of 25 miles, something, I don't even know what it is. I have a look at cheat, shall we? 31 miles, so yeah, we know it's perfectly safe in this case. Um, and if we decide it's tactically beneficial to do so, we can do another notch. Um, now, this type of, uh, we know a good knowledge of this SA-10 means that it's going to launch multiple times uh, in multiple aspects of ourselves. So when we're diving, it's going to launch us. When we're notching us, it's going to launch us. We can't notch uh, a, a radar like this. It'll happily launch us probably when we're notching. And notching means going sideways, basically. It's what upsets radars. And so in that case, what we're going to be doing is looking out our side when we're notching it again and making the necessary adjustments to burn those missiles down. Luckily, they are smoked at least while the missiles are burning. So it's key to try and ditch those missiles in the ground by doing our dives down while they've still got their smoke on. Otherwise, they can become very dangerous. We'll keep doing it until we get shot down. Eventually, we're going to run out of energy. Those missiles are just going to keep firing, firing at us. But we'll show you how we can do several notches to keep working our way closer to that thing. Um, I'm not even going to chaff. I'm just going to show you kinetically. So find that. There it is. Down we go. Off the power. 90 degrees down. Roll level. Pull up. See that thing struggling to loft? Look, it's really struggling to loft now. I think it's going to ditch. I think they're ditched or they're out of energy now. The smoke trails are gone, so they're out of energy. I'm going to do the reversal. Power on, turn left. 
And what we want to do on this backwards leg of the notch is to get our altitude up again because we need to do that dive to beat the missile. So let's take this time to get our speed up again and our altitude. Is that another launch? I've lost the bloody thing. Can't see the launch. Well, I just got situational awareness problems here. No, I don't think it's going to fire it. Oh, there it is. There's a launch. That is a launch. Back we go. Run it into the ground. I'm going to do a reversal this time because I'm going to get a little further. Away. So this leg, we're going to run it into the ground. This leg, power on. Let's get our altitude back. Struggling to see the launches this time for some reason. Got the altitude back. I'm just going to cheat, uh, make sure I'm not being fired. Okay, I've got two missiles inbound and they're both scratched. They're both 300 knots, they're no good. Okay, where is that launcher? It's somewhere about there, isn't it? Okay. Oops, silly. Okay, plenty of energy in the bird. We're going to turn in again, try and get a little bit closer. And what we're going to do is get closer at each step. Um, and as we get closer, the firing ferocity of that missile is going to get harder and harder and it's going to win the war but it shows you a good idea of this thing what we can do I can't see it anymore anyone see it? just check no there's no miss just not firing at us for some reason I maybe run out of missiles or something don't know, but we're going to get pretty close now. We're going to get to um, 22 miles. Let's keep going in. Speed is a tiny bit more speed. And all this time we should be gaining altitude. If we're going to do this method, uh, if we, you know, we've got nothing to hide behind and whatnot. Where's the launch? Where's the launch? There it is. Up we go. So, repeat. Wind and repeat. We simply don't allow it to loft by doing this. It's very upset. upset. Look at it to get down there. Nothing it can do. The one thing missiles don't like doing is going low. Massive amounts of drag. They can't go very uh, low. Uh, they can't go very far when they're low. Simple as that. Power on. Still notching. Waiting for the smoke to run out. Wait for the smoke to run out. Okay, it's out of connect energy. So what I'm going to do now is reverse. Force that thing to turn. It's still a good couple of miles away. Watch my speed. Keep my speed high. Up again. Turning away. And we're now notching the other way. Look for a launch, look for a launch, look for a launch. Don't see one. It'd be nice if we had a landmark. I can't see one. Just checking our situation now. We are uh, to see. You've got a couple of grumbles here. But look, again, they're 300 knots. There's nothing they can do. 20 miles. We're slowly clawing our way in. Power on. To get our kinetic energy while, I, while we can. Oh, sorry, our potential energy while we can. I can see one. Look, there's one right there. Ah, pull up. It's so slow, it can't track me at this point. It can't follow me. That's funny. I'm slightly askew. I'm going to turn back in now. I reckon that'll probably be a launch. No, no launch. Where is it? Where is it? I think it's ahead of us there somewhere. It is, I think. Distance now. 14 miles. Uh... Oh, launch! Rinse and repeat. And this is going to get harder and harder, obviously. And run it into the ground. Run it into the ground. Run it into the ground. Wait for it to run out of smoke. Wait for it to run out of smoke. It's out. Up we go. Force it back up. Turn. I may lose this one. I'm going to lose this one. It's fired one here, look. I'm gonna almost certainly not gonna be able to dodge this. Ah, oh, and it got me. Yeah, and it was just a yeah, it's just a losing war there. I'm, uh, it's going to keep firing more and more at, at me. But it showed you the idea there of how if we don't want to run away, which is preferable, then we can go sideways and notch like that, and we can even work our way inwards if we really want. Uh, it's going to leave us our last attack. It's going to be a medium altitude attack. We're going to do exactly the same as we did for, for the SA6 medium altitude, uh, and we're going to turn it to a notch, and we're then going to use the terrain to um, attack this guy. Uh, so, medium altitude, off we go. Okay, let's get ourselves a search. Let's search for that thing. Got a power up. 
speed up. It's on the nose somewhere, we know. Keep checking for track, no track. Oh, that's a track. SA10... SA10 track, that is. Wait for a launch. Sort the trim out while we're here. Get the speed up. Get a good look around. Where is the visual cues for this thing? It's on that peninsula with some big fat buildings. That's our visual... Is that a launch? That's a launch. Where is it? There it is. It's going up. And okay. So, follow what we did before. We've got a good look at it. We know where it is. Down vertical, off the power, straight down, run it into the ground, maintain our speed, and into the notch. Watch the trajectory. What can that missile do? Nothing will be like this. It should be lower than that. SC300 will need to be much lower. That kind of low. That's good. Now we've seen where it is, we can go and ingress. Let's see if we get this gun working. This. Ah, okay. I think that switch is a little bit funny at the moment. Well, I'm not even going to use my RWR because I've got a good look at it. I know exactly where to go. And there's a good chance it's going to be able to fire at us again. Um, because we can't, you know, wish for mountains all the way. So, if that's the case, we're just going to tease it. We might be able to get a search. Okay, we've got the clamshell. We can see where it is in azimuth. It's five degrees, two degrees left. So we tease another couple of missiles at it, shall we? Uh, shit. Track. No launches. Come on, launch a beep. There's a launch. All right on cue. So this is a nice little gully we can use. Don't even need to go vertical here. We can just use this nice little gully. And that's already a dead missile. Give it a minute to break its lock. Here we go again. Where are you, little monkey? Okay. Nailing us. It's out in a little open gully there, so uh, out into the flatland, so maybe going around this way is the best way to do it. But we've got to look at the terrain and see where it's going to allow us to get to this thing. Probably a good time to speed up at this point in case we do get an emergency launch. Right. I don't think it can track us anymore so we're going to look for the search ping. Got the ping. Keep low. Low, low, low. Finding you. Oh, gone past it. There it is. Just fired by the looks of it. Right. Now it's got a minimum radius of about a mile. So keeping a mile, it can't shoot us. Up we go. For our gun run. Get some energy in the bird. And we're just going just gonna to float down onto it. One little baby. Again, this isn't really part of the video, but it's just a bit of fun showing what you can do. Brrr. Get some. Keep it tight, keep it within the mile. Up we go again. Try and get some energy back at the bird. That should be okay. We are going to stall a bit, so we'll have to go lateral. Um, when targeting, always go for the radar first. I was just mucking around there. I suppose just do it properly. So let's go for this radar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Off the power. Don't panic. Oh, that was a close one. Uh, that's both radars down. Um, nope, still a track radar? Doesn't really matter. That's not the point of this. Right, so that's showing um, the high altitude, the decisions we made, the choices we have, and dependent on the variables that we had inputted through our senses and our knowledge. And it showed how we could turn that long altitude 
uh, low down notch into an aggressive move of slowly creeping in, uh, at least to a certain degree. It showed the low altitude, if we were sprung from low altitude, about six or seven miles, how we could beat it by doing the 180 high 9G turn and then the snakes left and right, um, then how we can burn the rocket motor off and how we can win it like that. And how from medium altitude we can beat it with the way that we showed against the SA6, but then we can turn it into an aggressive seed by using the terrain, forcing it to launch at us constantly uh, to see its smoke trail, to see where it is, go it in, get within a mile, and then it's useless. It's completely helpless. Yes, I know in reality it would have short range defenses here, but the actual the seed part wasn't part of this uh, video. I'm just showing you how to dodge kinetically and in terms of radar. Okay, so that's the flying done. Now I figure we'd go into tack view and have a quick look from another angle, just to, I guess to reinforce everything. So what's this one going to be? This is going to be the medium altitude. Okay, so it fired actually about 10 miles. I thought it was about 6 or 7, but um, it was a lot further than I thought. And that's fine. It's going to give us plenty of a chance to beat it. And look how the missile actually came out uh, even less than 45 degrees, about 20 degrees up, even though it looked like it was coming up uh, pretty much straight out. So I've assessed it and I've made my decision. I'm going to turn. So remember, so we half roll over, invert. Pull down until we're more or less, uh, I would say more or less straight down. That's kind of about 70 degrees or something, but it's enough to do the trick. And the decision is made if we're purely defensive tactically, then we just roll all the way around and out. So a split S. And if we are aggressive, then we are going to roll into a notch, which we're doing here. We're going to the left. We're not over speeding, so we're less than uh, between 400 and 500. That one's already rammed itself into the ground. Let's have a look at that trajectory again. You see, it had to go right through the earth like that to catch up with us because of our nose pointing at the ground. And this one we forced so low, it's never, it's not been able to get up to speed, look, because it's so low, it can't get above uh, about 1,100 knots. If it got some altitude, it got go up to two, two and a half thousand knots. And another one there just got trashed as soon as it left the launcher. So, and then as soon as we're down here, we've broken, we've now broken the lock of, uh, of the system. Um, so it never had a chance basically, there's nothing it could have done to shoot us down. So let's next go to the S300. Okay, so we're getting to what, 13 miles, hasn't fired yet. I think it fired about 10 miles, oh no it, no, it fired there. So it fired about 13 miles, I'd guessed it was 10, but 13, so be it. So there's nothing we can do on the ground, we can't go down, so we're going to have to beat it in terms of power and G and whatnot. Uh, so we're going to keep between 400 and 500 knots, closer to 500 better, relatively high G, so we've got over 5G all the way around here, and we want to end up going cold, so it's pretty well judged. Uh, these guys, because they're much more powerful missiles, even on the deck they're above 2,000 knots, very dangerous things here, these are. So at this point, um, they're still burning, they're still over 2,000 knots, so at this point is where we start S'ing left then right, then left then right, keeping around uh, 500 knots if possible, and then we can watch this thing burn down. And try and get them both highlighted like that. Watch that speed burn down. 1700, 1600, 1400. So the mixture of keeping it down low where the air is thick and making it S left and right has burned all its energy off. If we would just kept, kept, kept going straight, it would have caught us up very easily. And you can see the path that we've done there. And this one will go exactly the same way. 800, 700. 600 knots, so that's that. If it, it if it was a lot closer, like eight miles or something, we probably wouldn't have got away. We would have needed a power, more faster jet or whatever to get away. Uh, but that's that. Uh, right, what was next? Okay, this is the high altitude intercept, so that's 20,000 feet. Missile is fired. We spend a few seconds looking at the missile, checking its trajectory, checking it's coming towards us and whatnot. Then we're going to invert, dive down. And if we're defensive, purely defensive tactically, we would just go all the way down to 10,000 feet and then power away and do the S's if we need to. We probably, probably wouldn't need to at 30 miles, to be honest. Or we can come down and go into a notch left or right if we're going to be aggressive, and I think we were. And so we're not allowing that missile to do what it wants. That missile wants to loft into the thin air so it can come jump down on top of us. But it simply can't do that. It's, we're not allowing it by aiming our nose at the ground. It's having to, it's having to basically go down. And it hates that. It's going to burn all of its the missile speed off. It's, uh, it's never going to stand a chance. See the missile is down to uh, 1,300 knots. It's only halfway to us, look. 16 miles. I think it fired, what did it fire? 31 miles or something? Right, so I'm happy those missiles are burnt off. Their, their smoke, um, their white smoke trails have gone, so their engines are turned off. And so they're going to be cruising, I figure, about 1,000 knots. 
uh, about 10 miles away so I can now turn around just finish them off completely and put my burners on and get the altitude up again and we can keep doing this so those missiles are scratched check the distance we're at uh, 29 miles now so we've eat a little bit more increase our altitude wait for the next missile to fire for some reason I did that did I see a new missile come out no so I shouldn't have terminated there. I don't know why I did that. Did that for some reason. Very silly of me. Must have thought there was another missile. Must have saw an old trail or something. Uh, when I'm sure these are beaten, then I'm going to turn hot. Bring in the uh, distance. We're down to 21 miles now. Repeat the process. Roll over. Down. Drive these missiles down. Doesn't let them get their speed up as quick. Doesn't let them loft. Hate doing these missiles. Hate doing this. You can see I'm not going down completely vertically. I'm going down about 70 degrees again. 100, 1300. You can already see I'm going to beat these ones. Motors I imagine are finished now. So I'm happy to turn round. Scratch them completely. Bring them up. Make them turn. That's going to scratch them down to 400 knots or something. Um, we're going to notch again. Uh, we should be notching exactly 90 degrees to this. You can see we've failed a bit there. We're um, going about 60 or 70 degrees, which is a bit silly of me. So that was just a, uh, an error there. It's probably going to cost me. Working my way up to 10,000 feet. Let's wait for the next missile. They look close, but I don't think there were ever been any threat. So getting up to Angels 10 again, getting up to 500 knots again. I'm turning in. And we're now down to 13 miles. And it's going to get harder now because by the time these missiles get to me, they're still burning. The motors are still going. That makes it incredibly difficult to beat. So I had a really good downturn there. Uh, but these are smart missiles. You see how the SA-6s just ran into the ground. These are a lot smarter. Uh, they know what I'm trying to do and so they counter for it. We're going along the ground. Oh, one I managed to scratch. Nice. This one's a smart one. I even managed... Oh, no, it didn't manage to loft again. But it's still burning. It's still... Uh, it's just come off the burner now. So I just didn't have enough in me to beat it. Uh, probably whatever I did there. Sweet, I can't roll back. Yeah. So, I mean, it was at 2,000 knots. Uh, when it was like half, a, when it was like a mile away. It's still at 2,000 knots. So, if I would have carried on notching, I probably wouldn't have beat it. If I'd have turned around, high G turned right the way around, I probably would have beat it. But I don't think I could have got much closer in an F5 uh, than this. I just would have, you know, it would have got worse and worse. So that's showing in the notching of that. Uh, next, the only one left was, I've got to go find it. So it's just the same thing as the SA-6 at the beginning, and a medium altitude shot. So the missile is fired. It'll take a few seconds to see it. Bring it down. And this time we've got the added benefit of terrain, so the missile launcher never stood a chance. Drive them into the ground. Drive them into the thick air. Unscratched. Too scratch just because of the loss of a line of sight simple as that right so that's it that's my video on evading radar sam so those are the only things i really suggest yes obviously obviously if you've got terrain then use it but i'm going to work on the basis that you haven't got terrain to hide behind uh, tomorrow or the next day we'll go to short range sams ir sams manpad stuff like that hope you enjoyed that and see you later